All right, let's go ahead and get started with our food tech segment. Please welcome Novo Nutrients. Hi, I'm David Say, and I'm the CEO of Novo Nutrients, and we make alternative proteins from industrial emissions of carbon dioxide. What that means is we take carbon dioxide gas that would normally go into the atmosphere, combine it with hydrogen, as well as a few other things. Uh, and this is important because hydrogen is really the chemical energy commodity of the future and something that will increasingly be made from solar power, wind power, and the like. Uh, we put these inputs into our proprietary uh, biology and uh, equipment system. And uh, through a bacterial fermentation process, we end up with really high performance protein ingredients uh, for food, which is to say to go into plant-based meats, as well as feed, uh, notably aquaculture and pet food. Our protein is mostly exactly that, 73% dry weight protein, has no starches, and contains meaningful amounts of important and valuable substances like hemes, vitamin B complex, and carotenoids. So the fact that bacteria, and particularly our bacteria, offer a much more meat-like amino acid profile provides a secondary advantage over the reigning champion for these kinds of things, which is a pea protein isolate. But probably most importantly is cost. Even if pea protein isolate were to have its cost in the coming years, we would still have double the cost efficiency um, as well as some significant advantage in sustainability. We don't need land, uh, arable land, water for irrigation, pesticides, fertilizers, or the like. And so at left here, you can see what a pilot project, such as the two that we're uh, putting up next year, but would look like. And on the right, the trajectory of scaling that we intend, both in terms of carbon dioxide upcycling, but also uh, in terms of protein production, achieving, uh, as shown here, two megatons of protein production uh, annually, and eventually going far beyond that. The fact that we can get interest in our projects from carbon emitters, as well as agri-food tech, puts us in a unique position to really become a capital light business with a capital heavy technology. And what one of those projects may look like economically, uh, something like this planned for the US Gulf Coast, almost a quarter billion dollars a year in revenue yielding $60 million a year in income. Looking back at the past few years, we're very proud of the investors that we've raised from, of the nutrition trials we've done with the federal government, of the pilot engineering uh, that has been accomplished with Black & Beach, uh, our DOE grants, and our publicized work with Scredding, Nutreco, um, moving towards an offtake agreement. And um, next year, we get into production pilots. Our team comes from the very companies and academic institutions that I think one would wanna see for a business like this. I'll single out Thomas Notch, who is executive vice president of Novozyme, and really knows as much as anyone about commercial industrial fermentation. So looking ahead, the next step for us is a Series A, where we have very strong support from existing investors, but are looking for a lead, as well as one or more strategic participants. And this is what will really enable us to move ahead into the decade and put many megatons of protein production and carbon dioxide cycling around the planet. Thank you very much, Food Bites. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, David. I'll hand it over to Victor now. You've got three minutes on the clock. Great, David. Uh, you're in one of the really exciting areas of food systems, uh, decoupling of plant uh, proteins from uh, land. So uh, congratulations. Um, what are the core products and milestones you've set for your Series A as a proof of concept? And, you know, I guess uh, uh, related, what will your Series B investors be investing in? So our top priority uh, milestone from the Series A is to get a traction contract with a food sector player um, around a food ingredient prototype. And this, so this would be something that parallels the existing contract we have with Nutreco Scredding, but instead of being in feed, it would be in food. Um, and you know, we're, we're also looking ahead to having our two pilot projects move ahead, uh, getting our first licensing revenue actually within one quarter uh, from now. Um, and, uh, and so that, yeah, that's what a Series B investor would be looking at more or less. Great, and I know you touched on it a little bit in your presentation when you uh, talked about the proprietary nature um, of some of the underlying science. Can you 
go a little bit deeper on that, you know, in regards to, um, you know, IP and, uh, you know, whether that's around the microbes themselves or uh, the bioreactors or any of the process IP. Right. So we have proprietary strains of bacteria. So, for example, our workhorse is one that we have selectively bred in real world cement gas to grow three times faster than the wild type. Um, we also don't tend to do monocultures when we're making protein. We use a patent pending uh, framework for consortia, which is to say using multiple species and strains together to get the maximum energy efficiency and be able to produce tailored protein products. And finally, the hardware that we use, the looping gas bioreactors are not your standard squat cylindrical fermentation tanks that one might be used to seeing in a brewery or uh, a winery, but rather they look a lot more like plumbing and we'll expect to apply for some patents uh, in those designs as well um, to, to maximize the way that the carbon dioxide uh, can be um, dissolved into the water-based media where the fermentation takes place. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, and I just last question in your presentation, you've you know you've identified you know some really emerging um, you know sort of three potentially massive uh, uh, sectors to apply your technology to. How do you think about prioritizing uh, you know the company and where you're putting human and financial capital? Yeah, so look, when we formed Nova Nutrients in 2017, uh, it didn't seem like the world was ready for food from bacteria, but today it is. And so that's very much the priority, using it energy directly to go into food that has the best sustainability characteristics. And I think it's really the right fit for this like surging imagination and ambition that the food sector has to do things better. So absolutely alternative protein for food. 